Hey, yo, what's good with the YouTube, man? This is your boy, Rojo. It's the Rojo Room. Well, I've been talking a lot about these rappers, man, and getting themselves in jams. You know, we've been focusing on the Northerners. However, Mozzie, Sacramento, the, the, the head rapper out of Sacramento, no matter what anybody says, you got him, you got Lavish D. They're, they're, they're the ones in sack, man. But uh, last year in Culver City, Mozzie was pulled over, had a Glock 26 in his bands. And he just had to turn himself in, man. Got a little article real quick. Local rapper Mozzie, real name Timothy Patterson, turned himself in yesterday to begin serving a one-year federal sentence on a gun charge, according to a spokesperson from the Federal Bureau of Prisons. We can confirm Timothy Cornell Patterson entered Bureau of Prison custody at the United States Penitentiary USP Atwater on July 28th of 2022. He has a projected release date of July 23rd, 2023. Now, I've never heard of a federal sentence less than a year, but let's continue. Mozzie's charges rise from a traffic stop in January of 2021 in Culver City, California. Police there pulled the sleepwalking rapper over for traffic violations and smelt burnt marijuana. Then they searched the car. They found a Glock 26, 16 rounds of 9mm ammunition, and a personal use amount of marijuana. Mozzie was booked and released after posting $35,000 bail. Later, the district attorney's office rejected the rapper's case and referred it to a local U.S. attorney's office in Los Angeles. U.S. Marshals picked him up at an unrelated court appearance in Las Vegas. The rapper and his wife, Sukjit Singh, went half on a million-dollar appearance bond, and he bonded out on the federal charge. Mozzie, who now lives in Sherman Oaks, pled guilty in January to the charge, and his lawyers asked for a sentence of probation, citing the rapper's ties to the community in Sacramento and a study that found murder to be the leading cause of death in rappers. Imagine that. Absent an attack on him or his family, he would never use the firearm. Thus, there is virtually no danger to society, Mozzie's lawyers wrote in a brief. We're going to get back to that. The rapper's legal team laid out a brief summary of his life, saying he was born into poverty, neglect, and drug addiction in Oak Park. His family members wrote to Judge Percy Anderson, recalling how his frequently incarcerated father abused his family and the little time that he was available at home and how his mother would take drugs and try to hide from the kids so they wouldn't see her under the influence. The rapper himself also wrote to the judge, calling his gun charge a mistake he would ultimately learn and become a better person from. Good job, Moss. The case made me realize that everything I had accomplished and built can be taken away because of a single mistake or lapse in judgment, he wrote. I once read that a stumble may prevent a fall. I believe that this was my stumble which will prevent me from taking a larger fall. I think I need something like this to give a little more structure to my life. Prosecutors asked Anderson to sentence Mozzie to 10 months, citing his validation by law enforcement with the 4th Avenue Bloods, and an admitted history of drug abuse from a young age. Prosecutors say he tested positive for marijuana while on pre-trial release and asked the judge to impose drug counseling. Remember guys, marijuana is legal for those 21 and over in California. They said the rapper's difficult upbringing was no excuse for breaking the law and asserted that a stiff prison sentence would carry the message to Mozzie and others that gun possession is a serious crime. The defendant appears to not understand that, as a previously convicted felon, he is prohibited by law from possessing a firearm, regardless of whatever risks his profession may entail, the government wrote. Anderson ended up undercutting both parties, sentencing the rapper to two months over the government's recommendation. Man, now there's a lot of good points, man. Mozzie was smart for writing that letter and taking accountability for his actions. That's what a lot of people fail to do, and, and we talk about this. I talk about this all the time. You gotta be accountable. You can't blame, you know, Tom, Dick, and Harry for your fuck up. You know what I mean? You can't blame the white folks. You can't blame. The, the police officers didn't plant that crack on you. You know what I'm saying? 99 times out of 100, bro. You know, so he did a real good thing by stepping up and taking accountability. And, you know, like I said, I've never heard of no 11-month and two-week federal prison sentence, bro. That's a trip. In California, you ain't, you ain't getting nothing less than 16 months, right? You know what I mean? Except on a violation 
or, or, or if you escape with no violence, they give you the year and the day, you know what I'm saying? But those are the only times, you know, I've ever heard of anything like that, man. But good for him, you know, and he's right. And, and that, that statement is right, man. Most rappers die for murder. You know what I mean? The thing with the, the Second Amendment and, and firearms and whatever, now I understand if you use a firearm in a commission of a crime, you should probably lose your firearm rights for a while. But should you lose them forever? Man, you get your voting rights back. You know, if, if, if you get in a DUI accident and you kill somebody, you get a vehicular manslaughter, you're not barred for life from driving a vehicle again. You know, so, you know, there's a lot of people. I know, man, every, every I know a lot of people who've been to the pen. And 99% of them, I would trust with a firearm not to be doing stupid shit. You know what I mean? People who've, who've graduated from that lifestyle, you start to understand the ramifications for certain actions better than people who have not. Like in my case, I could have 50 fucking firearms, bro, and mine would never bother nobody unless you forced me to use those on you. And that would be solely up to you. That wouldn't be something I wake up and look forward to doing. However, if you back me into a corner while I had no other options, hey, you know what I mean? I, I think the whole losing your firearm thing for life is is just it's just not right, man, in a lot of cases, man. You know, there's people out there that never been in no trouble that could go buy a firearm right now that are batshit crazy, bro. I mean, look at all these look at all these recent things that have happened, you know, where a lot of people have been, you know, exposed to, to gunfire, <laughs> you know, you got to choose how I say things carefully around YouTube, they already don't like me, so, um, they're all legally purchased, man, you know what I mean, you, there should be something, bro, there should be something, you, am I wrong, you, there should be some way where, you know, there's some kind of compromise, you know, you lose them for even more than the length of your parole. You got to do three years on parole. You lose them for seven. You know what I mean? You lose them for ten even. I could live with that. I'd have mine. I'd have my stuff reinstated. You know what I mean? I just think it's not right, you know, unless somebody's used that in a specific violent crime. You got convicted of murder. You know, you did an armed robbery with a gun. You know, you might, you might have to go jump through a few more hoops, you know? To the, than, than the next motherfucker, but you know, this is the same with, with all these rappers, man. They're all getting caught with guns, and as a rapper, and especially these ones who are allegedly gang-related, you know, the, the the one Rico and, you know, Babyface Wood and them cats, and now Mozzie, you know, they all have allegations of, of gang association. So you're already a target as a rapper. People think you got money, you know what I mean? They, hey, there's people out there that take rap real serious. Oh man, fuck what that fool's talking about. You know, it's, it's entertainment, right? But uh, you know, there's people out there that aren't that bright. As a rapper, do you need a firearm? Well, kinda, yeah. You know what I mean? Just like that thing says, man. All, every time you hear about a rapper dying, it's from gunfire. You know what I mean? The, you, there's not too many old age and. You know, things like that. You know, you got old dirty bastard or whatever. Been doing drugs for a hundred years. But uh what do you guys think, man? If if you if you go to prison, should you lose your firearm rights for life? I get the argument for that. I do. But I also get the argument against it. Cause society could trust me just fine with a handgun. Cause I would use it in a professional, responsible way that doesn't affect anybody else. Unless, like I said, the, the extenuating circumstances that you come in my house or, you know what I mean, you're you're attempting to take my life, you got a knife, I tell you to drop it, you come at me, bye. <laughs> you're history, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not out there gangbanging, I'm not out there robbing stores, I'm not out there doing nothing. And I, and I think there should at least be somewhat of a compromise. You should at least be able to possess a firearm in your home. Okay? Am I right? You should be able to defend your home, especially, you know, those of you who have a wife or children. You know what I'm saying? There's no reason because you've been in trouble 
decades ago that your family shouldn't be protected as much as the next man's family who'd never been in trouble. It's only logical. You know, you got people out there that got multiple murders, robberies. You know, if you got a murder with a gun and they want to take your stuff for life, you know, it's not a self-defense. You, you were gang banging. You know, you did a robbery. I get it. You, you, you fucked off your firearms, man. But in other situations, you know, I've never been busted of anything other than expelled in possession of a firearm. I take that back. I got a unlawful discharge of a firearm. It was weak. Um, they could have got me real bad on that one. But uh, I've never robbed nobody. You know what I mean? I've never been taken to court for shooting nobody. You know what I mean? So, I mean, what's the deal? Rappers, man, you guys got to use your head. Now, we were talking about the little northern homies the other day and them getting busted with guns. All right, Mozzie, Mozzie can afford private security detail. He don't need to be doing that, bro. You know what I mean? Save some of that money you're spending on tree or red bottoms or whatever. Hire you a security that has a concealed ex-military, ex-law enforcement. He can legally have the gun and protect you. His job is to protect you. Everybody's going to see that dude there. No, he's strapped. You know, most people don't like even odds. They want to creep you and sneak you and stuff. When they know you got armed security, eh, it's not as often, man. But then you don't get busted with, man, it, man, hey, 11 months, bro? Man, take that as a blessing, dude, because they could have folded you. X fell in a position of firearm 16, 2, and 3, bro. Second strike, double the 3, 85%. Prison priors. You could end up with like 8 years of 80-something percent, bro. So use it as a blessing, homie. You know what I mean? Dope. Hey, Mozzie shit is dope. He's got it. You know what I mean? He's he's one of my favorite rappers. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, let this be a lesson for all you guys out there. Man. Be careful with them guns. I understand you need to have them at times. I get it. I've been there. Just be careful, man. You know what I mean? It's better to be caught with than without. But if you adjust your lifestyle a little bit, you might not have to worry about it. It's your boy Rojo. This is the Rojo Room. Y'all have a good day. I'll see y'all on the live.